find the slope and rate of change. Notice that this is chapter four, section four. So you're gonna find it in chapter four of your iBooks. Um, today we're going to just dabble in slope. You're gonna notice that 5D, it says graphs of functions using slope intercept form. So we're gonna do just the slope piece today. And you can go, Mrs. Medvick, who cares about slope? Well, you know what? If you're handicapped and you're in a wheelchair, you care about slope. Because the can handicap ramps, you want to make sure that that slope's going to get you to where you need to go, but not go like super, super steep, right? That would be difficult. Or if you're a builder in a home, you want to make sure that that roof on your house or your building has the right steepness, right? Do you want a flat slope on a, on a roof? Do you want a flat roof? Correct. You'd live in a square, but what's wrong with having a flat roof? Oh, um, yeah. yeah, you're gonna. You could have water issues, or worse yet, like if you're in uh, New York right now, they got all kinds of snow. They have to get on top of the roof and they need to shovel it off because you get three feet of snow on an unstable roof. You're gonna have trouble. It's gonna cave in your roof, right? So you want to make sure you have a nice pitch to it, which is your slope. So that's why we study slope. All right. Slope, it's your M, it's your rise over your run, it's your change in your Y over your change in X, or it's this formula. Now, this formula is key. It's the Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Every single time you do slope for me, you're going to write this down. Every single time. All right? And the reason why I do that, it's so important, especially when you get to geometry, that I want to make sure that you write it down every single time you do it. All right. If you take a look at slope, it's your rise. It's the up and down over the run, which is left to right. When you do graphs, let's say they give you a graph, I'm okay with you counting it. I don't have a problem with that. So when they give you a graph, you're going to go M equals, and you're going to pick the point that's from left to right the closest to you. So for example, from left to right on this graph, this is the first dot I come to. So this is the one I start with. So to go from this dot to the other dot, I'm going to move either up or down, and then I go to the right. So I'm going to move up. One, two, three, so my slope is three over, and I go over one, two, three, four. So my slope, you'll notice, is three-fourths. Right, everyone should be writing this down. And it makes sense because the slope is a positive slope. I go uphill from left to right, so my slope is going to be positive. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Um, the first slope I come to or dot I come to is this dot. So I'm going to start with this dot. From left to right is the first one I run into. I'm going to go M equals, and do I move up or down to the next dot? I'm moving down, so I'm going to go minus... As I'm moving down, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and how many over do I go? I'm going to go over 2. So my N, M ends up being negative 3. That's my slope. We okay? So I move down 6, which is negative 6, and I go right 2, which is my 2, and then I reduce it. And it makes sense it would be a negative slope because notice it goes downhill from left to right. Questions? All right, let's go to the next one. First dot I come to is this one. So I'm going to start with this. M equals... Right? Do I move up or down? Okay, I move sideways. So I don't move up and down, so I'm going to put a zero because I don't do anything. 
And then I'm going to move sideways or to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I take zero and I divide it by six, what do I get? I get zero. The zero slope is your horizontal line. Horizontal lines always have zero slope. Always. I think of it this way. If I wanted to ride my bicycle on a flat surface, would it be hard? No, it would be zero effort. So if you think of it that way, it might help. All right, let's go to the next one. Which dot do I get to first? You get a choice then, all right? I'm going to choose the top one. I'm going to start here. Right, so M equals, do I move up or down? No. I'd move down how many? Five, minus five, and then do I move left or right? No, so I'm going to put in a zero. Now, if I put that into my calculator, what would I get? I'm not going to get zero, and I'm not going to get negative five. Those are both very good guesses. I'm not going to get one either. Zero. I'm not going to get zero. That was a really good answer, but I'm not. I'm going to get nothing. <laughs> what did you get? What does it say? I get error. Okay, never put error on a test. Well, that's what my calculator said. Don't do that, okay? But you're right. You're going to get error most of the time or syntax error or something like that. So what that means is it's undefined. Well, you get something, right? Okay. So it's undefined, right? Um, all vertical lines have this for a slope always you're always going to get zero in your denominator some students get confused on that so i tell them this can i take a regular bicycle and ride up the wall can i do that i can't can i i can't a regular bicycle i cannot correct i cannot do that so that's why it's undefined i can't do it i can't find the slope so if you think of it that way, you're going to know the difference between a zero slope and an undefined slope. Sometimes that helps. Questions? All right, let's move on. Now, this one you'll notice it says find the slope of a line passing through the points. Did they give me a graph? They did not give me a graph. So this is where you use that formula every single time. You're given ordered pairs and find slope. I want you to write the formula every single time, all right? This is going to help you next year. So first of all, I'm going to label this point one, and I'm going to label this point two. And you go, well, why? It doesn't matter what you label as point one or point two. You just have to be consistent, and I'll show you how. Now, the first point I'm going to label as x, one, y1. x, y are my ordered pairs. The 1 stands for point 1. In other words, I'm not going to label this x1, y2. I can't do that. It's got, if I label that x1, then that has to be y1. Point 2 I'm going to label then as x2, y2. Every single time you do this for me, I'm going to have you do that. And if you hand in your homework and it's not, I'm going to have you redo it. So M equals, I'm going to write down the formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. <clears throat> You're going to write down the formula every single time. Now it's like a recipe or a road map. I'm going to take y2, which is what? 1, and I'm going to subtract y1, which is negative 1, over, and some people say, can I put parentheses? Sure. I'm going to take x2, which is negative 2, minus x1, which is negative 3. 
right? So I got a chop, chop. So my numerator is two. My denominator, I'm going to chop, chop, and I get a. So my slope is two over one or two. Done. If you use the formula, it's almost foolproof. It really is. And in geometry, I don't have you do all this work, but kids tend to get messed up because they put the X's over the Y's, they flip-flop the ordered pairs, and it's a mess. And most of them are like, can I just do it the way I did in algebra because I always got it right in algebra. Let's take a look at number two. I'm going to label this point one, point two, x1, y1, x2, y2. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Does that sound like a song? It is. It's the song that will be in your head always. It can because you can also flip flop your ordered pairs. Yeah. Yeah, you could do y1 minus y2, but then in the denominator, you better do x1 minus x2. No. All right, what's my y2? 3 minus negative 2 over minus 1. Numerator, chop, chop, I get a over, and I get undefined. So what type of line? vertical. And if you think of it, I can't go up the wall with my bicycle. Okay. Questions? All right, let's do the third one. Point one, point two, x1, y1, x2, y2, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Like I said, it's foolproof. If you write it down the way that I asked you, it's super easy. All right, so I got 7 minus 7 over 4 minus a negative 3. So I'm a chop, chop. Numerator 0 over 7 then for my denominator, and I get what? 0, which is a horizontal line. You better know if it's horizontal or not. You don't have to write it down unless they ask you. But writing it down and understanding it is going to help you in the long run. Because we try to get you a lot of the times on this. Um, your Algebra 2 teacher, it's, it's filled with little things like that all over the place. And they try to get you. So the sooner you know it, the better you're going to be. Questions? Okay, let's move on. Um, this is find the missing value. Um, on this, what you're going to do is you're going to follow your slope. So I'm going to label this as point 1 and then point 2. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So I'm going to label it the same. I get M equals... Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, remember, math is not a spectator sport. Make sure you get this down. Because you're going to get to your homework and you go, I don't remember how to do this. Or take your standardized tests and go, I, oh, I forgot how to do this. Okay, what's my slope? 5, 6. So I'm going to go 5 over 6 equals my y2 is negative 1 minus 4 over 6 minus x. And you'll notice it's not as easy as you think it is. It's just like, whoa, that's really tricky. So what you're going to do on this is you're going to do something called cross products. And you're going to go 
5 times 6 minus x equals 6 times negative 1 minus 4. <clears throat> So 5, I'm going to keep this, and then I'm going to do a little order of operations there. And then I'm going to distribute. So I get 30 minus 5x equals negative 30. Subtract 30. Negative 5x gives me negative 60. Right? Then I do what? Done. Okay. Questions? Notice how using your cross products from last year, using the slope formula, this is where the slope formula is really handy. So if you know it and you have it as a tool, it works out really, really well. Okay. Let's keep going. Notice that slope and rate of change are the same thing. Um, and let's look at this problem. <clears throat> the table shows the change in temperature over time. This is key. Temperature over time. Find the rate of change in degrees Fahrenheit with respect to time. Help me out. If it's temperature over time, which one is my X, temperature or time? Okay, temperature is going to be my Y. And time is going to be my x because remember it's rise over run. My y goes first. So when you do these, pick two ordered pairs. Doesn't matter which two you choose because the slope will still work. And what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite the ordered pairs. So I'm going to write 0, 38 For one of my ordered pairs and the other one is going to be 2 comma 43 because it's got to be x y so then this is point one this is point two x1 y1 x2 y2 m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 So I get 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. <clears throat> Do you notice how I flip-flopped my ordered pairs? And the reason why I did that, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get the right fraction, and then I wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense my answer. The change in hours over temperature. That doesn't make sense. How many degrees is it going to change between t now and tomorrow? That makes more sense than the other way around. right? So that's why sometimes when they give it to you in a table, it's not always x, y. Sometimes they do y, x. And so you've got to make sure that you get your fractions right when you do slope. And it needs to make sense. Right? All right, your assignment then for over the weekend <clears throat> is going to be on page 239. I'm going to have you do 4 through 18, 57 to 62. And then we'll be looking at this on Monday. Um, if you have questions, I'll be giving you some work time. You'll have a little bit more on Monday than you did today because we went over your quiz today. Um, several of you have missing assignments from quite a while ago. Make sure that you get those done and get those in. So maybe over the weekend is a good time to get caught up.